here we are with our full equation. We're now going to define the models one by one, and we're going to start by the heat transfer model. So let me get rid of a couple of, uh, let me get rid of a few things. So I'm going to keep this sketch. Uh, I'm going to look at just the closed part of the cycle for now. So I'm going to get rid of the mass equation like so. I'm going to get rid of this term here. There we go. There's no mass transfer. So I have a combustion heat transfer and I have a heat, uh, heat transfer. Uh, a combustion heat addition, and I have a heat loss heat transfer term. So we're going to first look at the heat loss heat transfer term, and then go back to black. So I'm going to erase, let me erase everything around. So I'm only interested in what this value of Q dot is. All right, there, there we are. Okay, so Q dot heat transfer. What we do, and if you go to the uh, if you go to the course reserves, you can uh, find I've scanned excerpts from uh, the class book. Actually, I have it right here. This is the main book that defines all of the models you can want to find. So, internal combustion engines by uh, Ferguson and Kirkpatrick. Um, so, if you go to the uh, if you go to the course course reserves, if you don't have the book on hand, you're going to find excerpts, and one of them deals with heat transfer. So, if you read this. Basically, what it says is that most of the heat loss here, I'm going to erase my combustion. We're not interested in this. So most of the heat loss is occurring through basically some kind of convection. And the convection is equal to the convection heat transfer form is equal to the rate at which I'm losing heat is some H. This is some heat transfer coefficient, not enthalpy. This is where we're, we're using letters. I'm really sorry. Uh, so H multiplied by the area over which I'm losing heat. This is going to vary with theta. The area, that's a function of the angle, and the temperature. And it's going to be a temperature difference. So in this case, this is going to be T. I'm going to put T of theta. It's going to be, this is the instantaneous temperature inside the cylinder minus the wall temperature. And this is what we call a, a one zone or a zero dimensional model. So we're assuming that the temperature of the gas is the same everywhere inside the cylinder. We're assuming that the temperature of the wall is the same everywhere on the wall and that the rate at which you're losing heat everywhere on the surface of the uh, piston cylinder is the same regardless of where you're located. Um, we could have two zone models where we would split, let's say, the side wall from uh, the head uh, we could have three zone models, five zone models, and then we could have full sort of full CFD where I would just mesh the entire, uh, I would have points, a large number of points, hundreds of thousands or million points everywhere around the surface of the cylinder. And then I would compute the instantaneous heat transfer at every one of these locations. But then I would have to resolve the velocity everywhere inside the cylinder. The model we're building is an integrated model going to take these uh, effects into account, but it's going to take those effects uh, through some correlations. Uh, let's see. Yes. Okay. So H is our heat transfer coefficient. Actually, A, so we know we have a, we have a function for this inside um, in our course notes. So at a given value of theta, we can compute the area that's exposed. Um, let's see. T, T of theta, well, that's the instantaneous temperature. If I'm assuming it's an ideal gas, then I know that PV is equal to MRT. So that means that the temperature inside the gas is equal to PV over MR. That's the instantaneous temperature. And the volume, well, that's given by my function of theta. R is a constant. This is the specific uh, gas constant. And P is what I'm tracking. And the mass, well, in a closed system, the mass is constant. And if it's... Um, if it's an open system, then I'm also tracking the mass. So I can compute the instantaneous temperature at any point of time. Uh, great. So I can compute T. This is great. Now I need H. Well, scientists like non-dimensional numbers. So we're not actually going to have correlations of H. What we have is what we call correlations of the Nusselt number. NU. We write it NU. This is the Nusselt number. It's a non-dimensional number, which goes like this. It's H some characteristic length over k. And I'm really sorry. We've been using k for the adiabatic gas constant, but heat transfer people 
they use K for this as the heat conduction parameter. Heat conduction parameter. Now, um, K is nice because K is a constant of, of uh, uh, K is a constant for uh, a given material. So if you've got, um, if you have a, a, if you have a, a, a gas, so if you have whatever the gas is inside the cylinder, you can compute K for air at a given state, at a given temperature and pressure. And we can find a correlation for this. Um, there are some in the class book as well. So K is a nice, it's a defined number. It's a characteristic of a fluid. I don't have to worry too much uh, about any other, uh, you know, about the fluid velocities and so on, uh, except H does depend on how fast the, flowing is the flow is moving next to the wall and so on and how turbulent it is. Um, yeah, so it's not as clear cut as a, a, of a value um, that, um, that one would want. Okay, um, the Nusselt number is non-dimensional. So we don't know what the value of the, well, if we knew what the value of the Nusselt number was, then uh, we could simply compute it. And then uh, the characteristic length it's a characteristic size of the thing, something like the, this could be uh, the bore of the cylinder or the stroke. So we'll, I think we use bore in this case. Um, so if we knew what the Nusselt number is, then we could just compute H is going to be Nusselt number over, let's say bore multiplied by K of temperature and pressure. This is K of the gas. And that would be the heat transfer coefficient of the gas to cylinder walls. All right, we don't know what the Nusselt number is. So we have correlations, for example, the um, Anand correlation. I'm just going to switch sides for a minute. I don't know these by heart completely. So what we want is the value. So the value of the Nusselt number at a give, any given number of time is actually a correlation. It's A, some constant. And when we say correlation, that means we, it's an equation that we figured out experimentally. So we've, we've tweaked and tweaked the experiments and we basically fitted data points and we get a, a, a way to describe how something varies with something else that it's not based on physical equations. It's based on, on in, not, not even intuition. It's based on measurements and repeated measurements. So my new salt number is going to be A, some constant, times the Reynolds number raised to some power 0 0.7. So this is the Anand correlation. So if I know what the Reynolds number is, then I can compute what the Nusselt number is. And let's see, the what does our book say again? So for the NN correlation, um, A for a, four, for a four stroke engine, A is equal to 0 0.49. Um, oh, happens to be 0 0.26 for a two stroke engine. This is four stroke or 0 0.26 for two stroke. And the Reynolds number is, well, that's the definition you've probably seen. The Nusselt number is kind of new. If you haven't done heat transfer, um, uh, th this is sort of the first place where you find it. Uh, but the Reynolds number in mechanical engineering, we see it very early on in fluids courses. That's equal to density, velocity, rho u, some characteristic length, over mu, where this is the density of the gas. Aha. Um, or this is equal, you could rewrite this as U, some character, it's actually some characteristic velocity, um, L characteristic over nu, this is the kinematic viscosity. Which again, the kinematic viscosity, um, we can find, well, we can find, not correlations, we can find um, uh, models for them. And, if you, uh, if you look in, uh, in your class book, there's tables of uh, kinematic viscosity for, this is the kinematic viscosity of the air inside the cylinder. Uh, this is equal to mu divided by rho. So this is gonna be a function of the temperature and pressure. Um, the Anand correlation for you, it always uses the mean piston speed, up bar. This is our two LN. And the characteristic length, we're going to use the bore. It's probably pretty good. Okay. 
So that means that at any condition that the piston is running at, so at a given value of n, uh, the piston is, uh, the, the, the crankshaft is turning and turning at a certain value n, uh, that means, and it's got a certain stroke, so I can compute what the mean piston velocity is. And I know what the bore of the cylinder is, that's the geometry of my engine. And at any instant, at any theta, I look at what's the temperature and pressure, I compute the kinematic viscosity, that gives me a Reynolds number. Gives me a value, whatever, 252,363 making it up. Let's say it's that value. I plug that in this equation there, 250, whatever number I made up, uh, raise that to the 0.7, multiply by the correct constant. It's a four stroke or two stroke engine. And that gives me a value of the Nusselt number. I go and take that and I plug it in here. Oh, temperature and pressure. I compute uh, the heat conduction um, uh, coefficient K for the temperature and pressure of the gas. So it's going to be K of the air. And I multiply that by the value of the Nusselt number that I find found, divide by the bore, and that gives me a value of H. Finally, that gives me a value of H at that, at that particular value of theta. I've computed the area at that value of theta, and then I know what the temperature is. Uh, the wall temperature, I could specify this is, let's say the coolant temperature, roughly, which is roughly constant. It's when the engine is operating. It's about it's water so it's about you know, 80 degrees celsius 80 90 degrees celsius so we could assume it's a roughly constant uh, wall temperature and that goes in there and then i get a value of uh, heat transfer out awesome and then that number goes into uh into my differential equation so essentially when i'm writing uh when i'm writing a function function it has an output dp dw is equal to blah 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 and it has certain inputs i have to give it n and p theta probably want to input more stuff the geometry the, of the engine and so on then in there first i'm going to want to compute you know, reynolds number is equal to oh actually before i compute the reynolds number i'm going to want to compute t is equal to P V of theta oh, over M R specific. I'm going to have to compute V of theta is equal to blah. It's going to return a value, put it in here, get the temperature. Uh, I'm going to compute nu is equal to blah, 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 whatever function that is. Then I can compute U P bar. It's going to be equal to 2 LN. That's going to be a constant, 2 LN. And then I'm going to combine all of these to get the Reynolds number is equal to U P bar V over new. It's going to be equal to blop some number. I don't know what that number is going to be. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to say the new soap number is going to be equal to a Reynolds number to the 0.7. Blop. It's going to give me a number. And then I'm going to compute H is equal to new salt over B. Oh, I'm going to have to compute K first some function of temperature and pressure. So Nusselt over B times K. Um, good, and then I can compute DP D theta. It's gonna be equal to, I'm gonna have a K minus one over two pi N V. And then in the bracket is going to come this model there, this Q dot H A T minus T wall this minus k p v prime over v and then this function is going to return dp it's also going to return dw dw d theta is equal to p v prime but that one doesn't require a specific model and that is what we mean by modeling one term so in computing all of these here i'm going to put them in red so in computing all of these here, I'm able to integrate that number inside this bracket. And now I have a model for the heat transfer from the gas to the piston. And that's it.